Well, I got a little issue with my service truck. Um, it lacks power. It's got a check engine light for running lean. I think it's a fuel pump issue or a fuel filter issue. Now, I replaced this fuel pump a couple of years ago when I first got the truck, 2015. So it's held up pretty good, but it's fine. But it does have that check engine light on. Revs up. Everything else is good. So to test my uh, theory about it having fuel pressure related issues, I'm going to get my fuel pressure te fuel pressure gauge or test kit and then hook it up and then show you guys uh, what the pressure is. Go from there. So despite popular belief, this is a V10 and not a diesel. Um, on Fords and most other vehicles, if it's going to have a test port, it's going to be on one of the fuel rails. The fuel rails are the things right above the fuel injectors. And you can see mine way back there. It looks just like a regular vehicle valve core. And our fuel pressure gauge has a little ferrule that you spin on there. Make sure that's tight. You don't want to leak it all over the place. So I'll get it hooked up and then we'll uh, test pressure. All right. Now we got it hooked up back there. You see my line. Oh, I heard that just crack a little bit because I was leaning on it. So now all we have to do is turn our key on. So 35 is a little low. As soon as we turn it off, it's getting down to 30. So I looked up the spec and it's supposed to be between 28 and 35. I guess I was thinking of a different system, like an LS or something, 45 to 60. Um, seems to, fuel pressure seems to be good. I do still need to change the fuel filter though. I'm gonna go ahead and change that. And the problem I was having is the other day when I was on the highway, um, I would give it some gas and it really felt underpowered. Like I just wasn't making hardly anything. Um, so I don't think I have a fuel fuel related problem. I think I have a um, something else. Now I know I just like my air filter. I don't remember the last time I changed my air filter. So I'm gonna pull my air filter out, go for a drive, see if that makes a difference. If it does, I'll just go buy another air filter. If it doesn't make a difference, then we need to diagnose some more stuff. So this is about the best angle I can get. All you have to do to take these clips off is push that forward, slide that, and they'll just pull right out. Now on this side, you have to use a little spring clip like that. And then you shove that up into the fuel line. Now this back side on mine is going to be a little bit different than yours because there's supposed to be a plastic clip in there. But as you can see, mine actually broke. All right, so mine's a little different. You should have a plastic clip on yours, but mine broke, so I, uh, I had to redneck mine. When you get the fuel filter out, <clears throat> there's nothing holding it, it's just in there in a clip. Now all I did to rig mine, stick a zip tie in it, and it worked for uh, several hundred thousand miles.
good as new. Now that front one's gonna be a lot easier. All you gotta do with it, stick it right on there and push it on it, you'll hear it go click. Put our clip in there and that's it. Now I might have drained out too much, but uh, I see the color of that. No, it's supposed to be. Uh, it's supposed to be clear. <laughs> so the other problem I have is one of the O2 sensors. That's why that check engine light was originally on. Um, I don't know when these have been replaced. So I just bought two brand new ones, and I can't find my actual O2 sensor wrench. Hopefully they're not in there super tight. Uh, we'll swap both of these out and uh, get them changed out. Now, FYI, if you order these online. Uh, get them from a trusted source because there is an aftermarket company that uh, counterfeits these. I bought these on Rock Auto and they are tremendously cheaper on Rock Auto than at any auto parts store. My nearest auto parts store, Riley's, I think was like 160 bucks each and I bought two of them on uh, Rock Auto for like 60 bucks or something like that. So let's call underneath there and see if the yellow ones are loose and if they're not, I'll show you how to loose them up. So we're going to attack the uh, passenger side one first. And I went ahead and disconnected the uh, connector because it's in a spot I can't get the camera anyway. All you do is you push down. You'll see it like this. Push down on a little connector like that. That moves that tab down and then just pulls out. Now, you need to make absolutely sure that your O2 sensor matches this. This one looks pretty easy, but there are some, they'll have like a little tab, especially the square ones. They'll have one little tab in one area and then they'll sell you a, a O2 sensor that's wrong and you'll keep trying to plug it in and it won't work. So all we have to do now, get a wrench on our O2 sensor and hopefully it loosens up. Now this is what I love about being a uh, Southern mechanic. All you Yankee mechanics gotta worry about all that rust. That and you uh, Canadians. Just barely took a little bit and got it right off. Now they make a specific tool just for this. It's a, um, it, it's like a closed, you know, open or a box in wrench that the uh, side have been cut out and then it has like a little square, three eighths half inch square to where you can use a ratchet on it. But <clears throat> there's our old one. So the new one's a little different design. I hope it's the uh, same one. This new one does have those little clips on it, which I don't think are for this truck, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Now this one's much easier to film, which means it's gonna be a bigger pain in the butt. Something's gonna go wrong. All right, so I got the fuel filter replaced, both those two sensors replaced. Now I need to clear the codes and cycle the key on, but the key has to be on whenever the scan tool's on anyway. Whenever you turn your key on and the engine is off, your fuel pump will 
uh, have voltage sent to it and it will pressurize the system and since we have that brand new fuel filter on there's air in the system but um, it'll bleed really really fast all you have to do is cycle it on count a couple of seconds and it usually crank right up now to hook up to the service truck I'm going to use this OBD link So adapter cable and four skin, not four skin, what? like my son said. He um, said that. You hook it up. As soon as you open the program, it'll ask you if it needs to read. And we've already read this trick before. I'm going to go ahead and hit no. So when you hit yes, it just remember it remembers the truck from last time, and it'll go through it. It knows all the modules. So right now it's trying to check every single module on the truck um, that it that could possibly exist and i think that's it for this trucks nope there we go 2003 so now we're done we'll go up here to the diagnostic trouble codes all right we have a o2 heater malfunction o2 heater malfunction 135 155 we have some body control module codes Really don't care about any of these instrument cluster codes. Readiness, 135. Really not considered. Don't care about any of these. So all I'm going to do is go down here to reset. Hit that. Hit yes. It says please cycle it off. Hit OK. Go ahead and hit read DTC again. All right, <clears throat> so we'll start it up. No codes. Uh... Now it's crazy about this truck. 390,000 miles. And I haven't had a single check engine light on it um, other than the first time I bought it. When I first bought it, um it had it broke fine and then it started having a misfire and these modular motors pretty much any engine right around 90 to 100 thousand miles spark plugs will go bad and it's just a maintenance item and that's what happened is i put 10 coils 10 spark plugs ran like a champ but i do want to get some data out of here so i'm going to go to my little waveform come down here to settings and this is going to tell me every single setting that this truck has available now if i want to just do do all of them I can do all that'll tell me so that just gave me a list of every single possible code that Ford has this truck doesn't have all these so we'll go to PCM all I really care about is let's see on the coolant temp there is no EGR. So these are all the ones I wanted to go ahead and look at. <clears throat> we come over here and hit check. That'll tell you all the values. And then we have to hit the little play button down here. And that'll actually show us everything. Now, this cylinder head temp, it's funny because on the Torque Pro app, it shows that it's 1200 degrees. And several other, uh, several other scan tools, rather, um, it tells me the same thing that uh, yeah, it's it's 1100 degrees 1200 degrees which usually indicates like a bad sensor, but you can tell I mean that's pretty normal that coolant head uh, coolant the cylinder head temperature Should be about the same as your engine coolant temp um, What I'm looking for right now is a heater is off heaters off here <clears throat> So our fuel trim is way off on bank two 99% Engine load to 20. I don't know why that's reading so high. It shouldn't. I think that's just a bad value. <clears throat> that's O2 sensor, bank one, sensor one, and that's O2 bank two, sensor one. Um, so that's my short term fuel trim on the right, fuel, fuel uh, short term fuel trim on the left. Uh, they're pretty good. I mean, they're Within you know two or three, so I'm not real worried about that. Uh, I need to get some drive t 
time on it and figure out what my long-term fuel trim is. This is an older truck, so there's really not any um, uh, actual cut like tests that you can really do. There is no uh, cylinder uh, cutout test or anything. I could clear all, clear all these, but on these older ones, whenever you uh, delete the uh, DTC. So, we'll read the DTCs one more time. None, everything seems good. So now I need to stop by and get an air filter. Air filter's pretty dirty. Um, and then test drive it to see if it still has lack of power or not. Um, never had a problem it didn't backfire at all yesterday it's just when i first took off it took way more throttle pedal than normal when i got up on the highway uh like right at 65 i'd floor it and it, it wouldn't kick down it would just <clears throat> you know it would kick down one gear but not go into like third gear when it was like a passing gear or something which tells me like i had lack of power but we're gonna find out um uh, hope you like the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and uh get out and fix them yeah that yeah that